You're tuning in to Radio Movies, a special event podcast in collaboration between the Explosion Network, the Pop Culturist, and DashGamer.com. Each week we'll be discussing the films, or we was, from the Kevin Smith Fuel School universe, our memories with them, why we love them, and we're preparing ourselves for Jane Silent Bob reboot, which we're hoping will magically release before next week's episode. My name's Dylan Blight, and joining me from the Pop Culturist is Brian Betson. Hey. And from Dash... Gamer.com. I'm just like, how? what do you say this way? Buddy Watson. You fucking think just because a guy reads comics, he can't start some shit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about our favorite uh, Kevin Smith movie because we're going to be officially ranking them. So I think you can kind of guess buddies, I guess, if you link the uh, quote introduction and Go work out how that works from there. Um, this will serve as a sort of wrap up ish episode, even though, of course, we have the ultimate goal of this podcast is to talk about Jane Silent Bob reboot. Hopefully, that is going to come out soon. Hopefully, we'll be able to get our hands on it soon and hopefully, we'll be back to discuss it. Um, be that tomorrow, a week from now, two weeks from now, a month from now. I don't really know. But this episode will serve as the finish until that happens. And what we're going to do is give you our list, our ordering, our leaderboard, whatever you want to call it for our Kevin Smith Viewer Skew Universe films, not Kevin Smith entirely, the Viewer Skew Universe films. Um, and then I'll we'll talk about ultimately what do, you th- what do we each feel these six movies, soon to be seven movies, mean to us? Do you, do you think they have a special place to you? Do you hold them dearly? And then I want to go over Kevin Smith himself. What part do you think Kevin Smith has had in shaping your life? We've touched on a lot of things, surely. Like, of course, we know, we know Ryan. Kevin Smith has moulded Ryan's life. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I was waiting for you to be like, look, we'll talk about how he's molded Ryan. Yeah, we'll, and, we'll and, talk about how he's, he's molded Ryan. I'm surprised your son's not named Kevin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, you missed, if it wasn't something. one of the most bogan names, I probably would have thought of it. Hey, Kevin. Uh, uh, Dante rattled around for a little while. <laughs> got, awesome. a do- got a doughy do- over there, Kevin. Pass the fuck. <laughs> That's got a dart. Got a dart. <laughs> I did also think Jason Robert too at one point. You get J Bob. There you go. Hey Jay. Hey Jay's Jaso. Jaso, mate. Jaso, mate. <laughs> Jaso, mate. You back for Hawthorne? Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me making a sports joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, even you, even you showed some growth in this uh, this six episode. Yeah. <laughs> in this, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll kind of just wrap up for our feelings on Kevin Smith and stuff like that. So um, let us start though with our lists. So since Buddy dropped the quote, let's start with you. Go from bottom to top is what we'll do. How you rank the movies and explain why you rank them the way you do and where where everything is, why it's there. Bottom to top. So at number six, I have Dogma is my least favorite Kevin Smith viewers universe movie. Uh, Like on the episode, I said I'm not really into all the religious stuff. In it, I feel like the humor in it was really low brow, and I generally just don't dig the movie. Um, I only really rewatched it because we watched it. Uh, we're doing this podcast. Um, I would not watch it on my own volition again, really. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, not not a big fan. Am I going from six to one, or are we are uh, rotating so, around? No, we'll go. We'll, we'll just do your, do your list because then you can explain uh, where everything is and ultimately why yeah. it places the way it is. Uh, number five, I've got Clerks 2. Once again, if you listened to last week's show, you know that I wasn't a big fan of the the donkey scene in it. I felt it like it came in a real pivotal time in the movie when we find out um, that, um, oh my God, freaking he's, you know, I've gone totally blank right now. Yeah, just, you're thinking about donkeys and, and you're yeah, like, oh right, no, that's, it's that's showing right. in your face. You're like, oh, I lost, I can't speak. It's the, it's the NSP erotica. Uh... <laughs> yeah, and uh, all the other stuff that I didn't really like in it, the vomit scene and I just, yeah, I don't feel like it was as relatable as the uh, other movies that I really enjoy. Uh, number four, I've got Jane, uh, Silent Bob, Strike Back. Once again, it's like a greatest hits movie and it's greatest hits of the next kind of three movies that are my top three. So um, without further ado, number three is Clerks. I love Clerks, especially being a retailer worker. It is really relatable and resonates quite 
a lot, especially within the workplace that I work with and how we have all these stupid conversations about movies and music and a little pop culture stuff and just some of the batshit things you would never really think of unless you lived in uh, lived or work in such kind of boring ass job sometimes <laughs> sometimes um, that really has no significance whatsoever. Yeah. So yeah, love love clerks one. And number one and two, uh, I feel like it's a tie. I said this on these episodes, um, but really depending on your mood or my mood, uh, because it's my list. um, (laughs) My mood? (laughs) My mood uh, comes down to Chasing Amy and Mallrats. I think Mallrats is number one just because of the quotable nature of it, and it's almost like watching a read-along when you you can watch it, and... um, just the first real experience of having other pop culture references pop up, pop up in a movie and be this kind of, I don't know if I'd say fourth wall breaking, but it, it it's a movie that took place in, in the real world, speaking about Spider-Man and comics and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, very relatable. And I love uh, Jason in this. So he's so good. And yeah, Chasing Amy has a lot of heart. And is out of all the Kevin Smith movies, I feel like this is one that really can stand on its own two feet without being pigeonholed into the viewer skew uni- universe. I think we said that before in the um, yeah, the uh, the ep- chasing Amy episode. So it's a tough one. I, I love to, and uh, sorry, I love chasing Amy for different reasons for what I do with mole rats, and it's really a, a flip of the coin with which one could be my favorite on on the day. Yep, I think. I, I, I'll, I'll let it know now that I am. I haven't heard anyone's list. I'm writing down everyone's list as we go, and then I will be able to give uh, an overall ranking by signing numbers. Very cool. Here. So we'll, we'll have an official winner by the end of this. I'll let you all know. Um, Ryan, what is your list from bottom to top? Uh, now, the order of the – obviously, the order is important, but, like, you know, it's a situation of, I like all of my children. Um <laughs> Like yeah, uh, for number and number six for me it's Dogma, uh, but also at five is Clerks and I believe I similar I feel these are interchangeable. Um, uh, for Dogma it's because of the because of the density of the film in terms of the subject matter it is it does make it difficult to casually rewatch, um, even though it is still very very good. It's just you can't you've got to be ready to watch it. It's not just something you can just put on for a laugh. Like hey, you know what we should watch Dogma. Uh, Clerks is fantastic, <laughs> but it certainly uh, feels its age in some ways, and it, it is a stepping stone to everything else that has come afterwards. So you can't really diss it in that sense. But uh, I do find it. I don't know. I guess, I guess there's, there's other things about the, there's things about the other ones that I like more because, as we've mentioned many times now, the growth of Kevin. Uh, next up is Mole Rats. Absolutely love it. Still fantastic, um, but it's not. Just, just quite not as good as the other options. Uh, Chasing Amy is brilliant. Hits me on emotion on, on emotional levels. It's just one of the uh, the most poignant of, of his of his films. It, it delivers such a different side uh, to Kevin, while also still li- balancing that uh, over the top uh, inappropriate humor that we've seen before. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob is number two. A lot of this is nostalgia. But uh, it's bright, it's colourful, it's fu- it's fun, it's stupid. Uh, I, I I have too many good memories with this movie for it to be anywhere else. Uh, and number one, for the reasons that I talked about last week, it's Clerks 2. Quick, quick re- rejig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quick, quick recap, Clerks 2 came at a very point in time in my life. Uh, one of the most important moments of my life in terms of a transition window uh, and the movie itself being about the transition away from uh, your dearest friend and what and the changes that the life can take you. Uh, and it ha- hit me right as I was leaving high school and, and about ready to move to Melbourne to study where my best friend, my best friend to this day, uh, is still back home. Um, and it was just this, yeah, it, was just, it, it spoke to me when I needed it the most. Uh, and for that, it'll always have a place in my heart. Uh, and on top of that, it uh, it gave me my wedding song, uh, and it gave me yeah, it's the connection with some other friends that even though we don't catch up anymore, it's it's a good connector for me. All right, my list, and I think 
Um, yeah, I think this is the only one we all connected on. I, too, at number six, have Dogma. And I also, like Ryan, would like to say that it's not like I dis- I don't actually dislike any of these movies, whereas yeah. Buddy's like, <laughs> fuck Dogma 2 and it's Doggy's erotica scene. <laughs> 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 fuck that scene up the ass. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, or pun intended, whichever way you want to take it. Um, yeah, I, I do like older movies and I've watched them all several times over um so this ranking is just comparing it's like it's like ranking tarantino movies to me honestly although i don't feel as deep a connection to tarantino movies because i feel that's and that's why i want to talk about kevin smith after this because i do think obviously kevin smith is an important part for all these movies because if you every episode we don't just talk about the movies we also always end up talking about kevin smith as a person which i think is important for how we're talking about these movies uh yeah so dogma it's fine i don't think it particularly is nothing as 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 Ryan said. You know, no, no one's ever going to be like, "Hey, Saturday afternoon, do you want to watch uh, Dogma?" Like, it's been a while <laughs> <laughs> of all the things you could watch. Yeah, um, it's also not a movie I'd ever like kind of randomly suggest to anyone. It just feels into such a random thing. It's like the only time you're ever going to watch it is if you're ever doing something like this. You're watching all of the Viewers Universe movies. Like, you'd never just randomly put it on. Um, then at number five, I actually have Chasing Amy. It's, and I, I do think like as much as I kind of can appreciate that movie more now, as I said in an episode when we discussed it, I think like it kind of just falls into this place for me simply because the first time I ever watched it, I just didn't get it. And it was out of all these movies, the most serious. And I was like, I don't know, like not, not a lot of this humor was hitting for me and whatever else. And um, even though I can watch it now and appreciate it more, kind of just falls into this place because of how I felt when I watched it, I guess. Um, and a lot of the other ones up here, I have more attachment from the first viewings I had of them. Um, at number four, I've got Jane Silent Bob, Strike Back. It's a fun movie. I enjoy it quite a lot. Makes me laugh still. But ultimately, it is just a, as a, it's just a fun movie. It's not, it's not anything grand. Number three, I have Clerks, the original Clerks, because I like... I, I can actually just watch that one straight up and laugh at the jokes because I think a lot of the jokes are still quite funny as we talked about on the first episode of this podcast. Um, but also I think just it's like all out of all these movies, it's the one with the most cinema history. You know, you can watch that one and kind of appreciate it for what it was at time and like the start of this career and um, all the tricks of the trade that kind of Kevin did to make that movie happen and stuff. And number two, as much as Buddy hates me, I've got Clerks 2. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, 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 I do find that movie, as we talked about on last week's episode, a lot of stuff, the friendship stuff and whatever else, um, relatable and stuff and the, the story about growing up and all, all this sort of stuff. And I still find a lot of it quite funny. It's got really great stuff. The, as we said, the, um, the donkey thing is, it's a thing that happens, but you know, it's, it's. <laughs> Ultimately, to me, it's a small part of the movie. I know it happens in such a big final part, but like I can look past it. I take it or leave it. It's, it doesn't affect my feelings in the movie in whole. Um, and then at number one, Mole Rats. I consider Mole Rats one of my favorite movies of all time. So it just, I it probably, I don't know where it would fall in my top 10 of all time. I've never actually done that list. It's scary to think about, but it would definitely be in there for sure. I've, this is the one of these movies I've watched the most. I watched it's it's there with Shaun of the Dead. I often, whenever I had sick days where you're just like, uh, I'm dying. Like my body sucks and I'm fucking like sneezing everywhere. And, like I can't do anything. And you know, we just want to watch something that's comfort food viewing mm. off my two c- highest viewed comfort views are mole rats and Shaun of the Dead. Both of those movies I watch so much and I just find them so funny every single time I watch them. Um, so that's why both of those movies would actually be in my top 10, but that's why Mole Rats falls at the top of this list because I watched it so much. It makes me laugh every single time. It just makes me happy and I enjoy it. And I could, as I said, when we discussed it on the second episode of this show, I literally like basically watched it one and a half times when it was on because it just like auto started playing again. I was like, oh, I'm going to watch the movie again. Sure, why not? It's still funny. Like, let's, let's go. Let's do it, Mole Rats. Um, so... Official ranking, looking at the the scores here, we have, unsurprisingly, Dogma at the very bottom because we all gave it the bottom vote. And a lonely three points. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it really did not do quite well at all there. Um, then we have Clerks in a, uh, in at number five. That one got a variation of points, but fell in there. And then we have a tie. So I don't want order. We'll just, we'll just say these are f- three, four, and whatever order you decide. But James Hunt, Bob Strike Back, and Chasing Amy both got tied points. And then second is Clerks 2. Mm. And number one is Mole Rats. I'm, because I'm as much glad as I could swing Clerks 2 up there. I feel <laughs> that my six points really really cause that <laughs> yeah well you're it's like me and buddy give such high points to more rats and then you're like at four and it's like hey eh, can't drag it down get out of here <laughs> and then it's kind of like uh you put clerks two as one i put it as two and then buddy's down here like trying to drag it down but it doesn't, it doesn't work out you know so it doesn't work out i fucked the metacritic yeah <laughs> so that's the official uh metacritic for our things um so ultimately, now that we're done looking over these six movies, buddy, how do you feel about these six films, the viewers' skew universe as a whole? And would you consider that some of, or definitely not all of, but some of these movies have shaped your movie viewing experience or however you want to word that kind of question? Like, do you think they play an important part on cinema for you, important part in your life, or are they just a bunch of... They're just movies. I think as, as much as Ryan's not going to like this answer, <laughs> not a lot, I don't think. Um, more Rats, maybe, with how much I love it, but I just don't know if my love for it and why I love it is impacting any other of my movie choices, if that makes sense. Um, as much as I love More Rats and Chasing Amy, I don't feel like they've they've made me gravitate towards a specific genre of movie or, or seek out movies that are of similar themes or anything like that. More rats, maybe in the sense that it's a movie that is very quotable. Um, I feel like it holds up as a comedy uh, over all these years. And maybe some of the other comedies that I enjoy or, or some of the other humor I find um, in movies is quite similar. So Scott Pilgrim versus the world is in my top five movies of all time. And that's got a lot of video game references and a lot of, I guess, pop culture uh, touch points in it, similar to what more rats is, but did more rats make me seek that out, or is that just something that I enjoy in movies? I, I don't know. So, now you watched that because everyone watched that movie when it came out. <laughs> yeah. That got pulled from my cinema within a week, and what the uh, fuck? it had t- ten thirty sessions um, after its debut, couple of days. So it got axed big time. That's that's weird. I was like, well, my cinema showed it for <clears throat> months. I think like that's how well it was. Yeah, doing but in Tasmania, you know, they would show shit movies for months, like months. <laughs> Haven't hasn't yesterday been showing for like t- twenty weeks? Well, it takes a long while to get things there by boat. So. Yeah. Well, you know, once you put them here, you might as well keep them going. <laughs> Ryan, how do you how do you feel then? The Viewers Universe movies, they su- super important to you. How do, how do you place them in your cinema viewing world? Yeah, they're incredibly important to me. Um, who'd have thought? <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? I know, right? It was fucking weird. You could um, swerve us all. <laughs> <laughs> I have the posters. I have all the the wedding vows yeah. and everything. But fuck these movies, guys. They're not really that important. <laughs> yeah, uh, these movies encapsulate such uh, a very particular window of time in my life. Uh, a lot of them are sort of been that situation of being there when I needed them, sort of thing. And um, it's tough to articulate how powerful and important these movies as well and we'll get to kevin smith in in a little while as well but yeah they have a and and when you when you look if i was when i'm on my deathbed and i look back at the things that helped shape the person that i had become by that day these films were part of that in my teens in my early 20s they are so involved with who i am and who i become or who i will become um I couldn't have I couldn't have them. I couldn't imagine my life without them. For even though I don't watch them as regularly or anything like I used to, they were so important. They are ingrained in me. They are part of me. I feel I feel like I have a similar answer, even though I don't have the uh, the the credence that you do to back up. <laughs> the, <laughs> the where's the evidence? Yeah, where's the evidence? Yeah, um, but it's it's kind of weird because. Although I can't look at these movies and be like, well, this movie or this thing like helped shape me into 
like being a better person or something drastic like that. But it's it's hard for me to not look at these movies, how much I watched them growing up once I found them. And I was like finding, finding, um, it was like finding someone you should have been friends with your whole life or something like that when you're, you know, like, oh, these, these people, this, why haven't I known about this for, why didn't I meet you 10 years ago or something like that, you know? Um, and ever since I have discovered them, it's like, and I, I do think the Kevin Smith thing is super important because like maybe if Kevin Smith wasn't his own like persona and like person, maybe these movies wouldn't be as important to me. Maybe like they're kind of semi-connected, like, cause although I don't watch these movies every single year, I do listen to Kevin Smith every single year, you know, and these are always going to come back to it. So I, I think they're somewhat interconnected, but I definitely feel like these are some of the movies I watched the most growing up. So I don't feel like they shape me to be a better person, but I definitely feel like they are key important players into the sort of comedy I was into back then. Even if a lot of that was naughty, bad jokes or whatever, that it was making me laugh. So that somewhat would have shaped my comedy, like what I found funny as a teenager and stuff. Um, but it also, all these movies shaped me wanting to at a period I think I talked about this somewhat on the Clerks one or something, but somewhat for a pre period, these movies where I wanted to be a filmmaker myself, these movies were like kind of the pinnacle, you know, like I would put these on a pedestal of like why I felt like I too could become a director one day, you know, it's, it, it's always funny because then Kevin Smith talks about how he watched Slackers and that was like, he watched Slackers and he's like, well, I can be a filmmaker. If this counts, then this counts. Where I was kind of doing a similar thing where I found these movies and was always like, this shit counts as movies. You know, like, mm. <laughs> like these seem very attain- attainable to me. Um, I can get, I can write fucking scripts and I can go, I can get my friends to do half-assed acting. Like I, I can do that. So like for a, a long period of time, I put these on a, a pinnacle of when I was in high school of like, obtainability of wanting to be a filmmaker. Like I can go from clerks to the higher budget million dollar films, you know, like sure I can do that. This isn't a very achievable goal. So um, like you said, the comfort food as well. It's like somebody, it's like the filmmaker gets you like Kevin Smith gets you because he's one of us. You know what I mean? It's, it's identifiable. It's relatable. It all resonates. Like he, he feels like, you know, he knows you and you know him. Yeah. And I definitely feel like, cause a lot of this podcast, every single episode, we always end up talking about Kevin Smith. And I've kind of always put that in as some of the topics at first, not on purpose, but then after the first couple of episodes where I'm like, I was always, always bringing up Kevin Smith and like him at the time and his history and like, how do we think you've grown? Blah, 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 blah. And once after the first couple of show notes, I noticed I was doing that. I was like, it's so funny how I view these movies, but I always view them so intrinsic. In- I can't even say the word super linked to Kevin Smith, like as a filmmaker. And there's not many other movies where I feel like the filmmaker and their history and their age and their time and where they were at the period um, is so connected to their actual work. Like, I don't think there's anything else I can watch that has such a super connection to the actual filmmaker to me. Like as much as I can look at Reservoir Dogs, and that was another movie at the time where I was like, super obtainable. I could write Reservoir Dogs. I could make Reservoir Dogs. Like, it's basically set in a fucking warehouse for 90%. I, I kind of put that on a pedestal, too, of, like, I want to be a filmmaker. This works. I never watch a Tarantino movie, and I'm like, well, yeah, because at this age, he was probably going for this, and, like, I, I don't know his life like I know mm. Kevin Smith's life, and that means I don't have the relatability to watch these movies with the same thing that we've been talking about with Kevin Smith. Um, so, yeah, talking about Kevin Smith, big part of this podcast, of course, Throw it back to you, Ryan, first. Kevin Smith, we're introduced to him through these movies, of course. But I feel like for a lot of people, it's easy to say he's more than just these movies. And, you know, and I, I don't mean like he's directing Supergirl and shit. I mean, a lot of people, of course, have come to know and mostly know Kevin Smith now through his podcasting work and, and stuff like that. So, and that's like, he does so much more than many people to the point that I feel like if you listen to so much of it, it's hard not to like get that feeling of like, I know this person and this person's like my friend, even though we don't know each other, but blah, blah, blah. Cause you get that feeling. Um, how do you feel about Kevin Smith in your life? Like if, if, the, if these films have played an important part somewhat, how, how would you say Kevin Smith as a person has played in his life, even outside of the films? 
well, once again, it's the same thing. Like if, when I when I look back at the people that have genuinely inspired me to do the things that I do or be the person that I am, uh, Kevin Smith is on that list. Just in terms of uh, ha- his view on the world mirrors mine. Our hu- our sense of humor align, and his sense of humor probably more than likely shaped mine. Um, you know, he's like, it's in the situation of, yeah, he, like he said, he has said some things that I wish I could have said. Um, it's the situation of like, because of Kevin Smith, I got into podcasting fucking eight years ago. You know what I mean? It was that decision of, of just being like, well, that, that inspiration of him being like, you know, why not give it a bell? Uh-huh. He didn't say that. Cause that's a very strange saying, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, because his whole idea of, you know, the two kinds of people in your life, the people that say why, people that say why not. Like, it's not this profound bit of information. It's, you know, it's quite a simple analysis, but um, it really helped me change my perspective in a lot of ways, um, in, especially in, like with the, with the job I have now as an example. Um, you know, my job now is very much focused around being that, that why not person. My My entire role is to help uh people you know uh, understand their their potential with you know when they when they don't see it and put opportunities in place that allow them to grow and a lot of that comes from asking why not um and that why not is yeah is what got me uh starting in radio it's what got me to uh you know have moments of, of trying to express uh myself in a in a creative fashion um yeah, it, it it's it's tough to like to not not re, not repeat myself. Or it, it's I'm also finding it very difficult to articulate um, the intense uh, intense probably the wrong word, but the immense uh, uh, inspiration that Kevin Smith has 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 given to me uh, for, uh, for the, the last X amount of years. Um, yeah, I can't understand. Like I said, right now I don't listen to much Kevin Smith podcasts. I, I certainly don't think that I have uh, passed him in terms of like I he's an influ- like an influence on the past any like as in I've got I've moved into somewhere else um, I just don't have a lot of time in my day to listen to a thousand podcasts like I used to um, yeah but I think that's I don't think that matters because it's like there's a period of your life um, where you listen to a bunch of stuff. And I feel like if someone inspires you to then go out and do something like podcasting mm. or whatever else, and if you then overlap and become like, I'm too busy doing the thing, um, be that with your job, because could you say for sure, do you, reckon, do you reckon if you didn't start podcasting all those years ago, you would have actually ever got to where your job is now? No. Um, yeah. m- podcasting and content creation is literally what got me my job that I have yes. now. Um the by by make like I said I've always growing up I was very shy um even in my early, even in my my university years I was very shy uh podcasting uh and that influence of sort of putting yourself out there uh has got me to go past that and I doubt you know if anyone was to ever meet me now you certainly wouldn't think I was shy um or sort of reserved in any way. And uh, that, that growth has come from the assistance of of that and that world. And um, yeah, you know, I mean like without, without articulating it well, like when Kev, when Kev came to Australia, like I saw him in multiple cities. I've seen him in Sydney. I've seen him in Melbourne within the week, the same week. I saw him in Sydney. I saw him in Melbourne. I saw him in Adelaide within the same week for different, um, different shows you know i got to one of the q and a's i actually got to ask him a question well, i can't remember what it was but um <laughs> you know I got, I got to speak to him for a moment and it what's was, with the donkey scene yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, the donkey yeah come? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it, it, it is it is one of those things where it's like yeah when i look back and i look at the the people that have influenced me and affected me and, and, and helped me grow. Um, yeah, that list is, you know, for a window of time was kind of funny for a window of time. It was embarrassingly the jackass guys. Cause that's what I needed when I was that age. I needed that confidence that they, that they had. Um, and then for a, a good hunk of that time, it's Kevin Smith. Yeah. But yeah, I, th- I think it's like, but 
knowing Kevin, like the, the just from listening to stuff and whatever else, and kind of having this idea, like I'd say that we both have an idea of who Kevin Smith yes. is, right? And I feel like if he he was to ever be like, oh, I don't have time to listen to much of your stuff anymore because. I started podcasting and then I did it for so many years and then I got this fantastic job that I'm now super happy in because of all this. He wouldn't turn around and be like, well, fuck, dude, like find some time to listen to my stuff. He'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah. don't yeah. listen to anything. Don't even watch my movies. Like, he's the kind of dude who would be like, I feel like if you told him that, he would just be happy with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like his, I job's like, his job's done. Yeah, it's like, I feel like he would be so happy and I feel like that's like the ultimate form of inspiration too where it's like you kind of surpass, like you, you get inspired by someone even if, like, say you want to be a, in a band or something and all you do is like listen to someone's music constantly or something like that. And then one day you're like, you don't listen to their stuff anymore because you're so busy with your own stuff. That's like mm-hmm. kind of the the goal, I feel somewhat. It's not to keep up with the amount of content you're intaking from someone who's in, who inspires you. It's literally to overtake that to a point. Yeah, I yeah. feel. Um, buddy. Kevin, my answer's going to suck compared yeah, to that. Yeah, How the follow, fuck do I follow, follow up after follow Ryan? Follow that, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah fuck. How do I follow that? Um, I, the thing I always take away from Kevin Smith, I think if you alluded to it already, is his you can do it attitude. And listening to, I think the only real Kevin Smith podcast I used to listen to was um, Jay and Silent Bob Get Old. Yeah. And that was probably the one I listened to the most out of any of his stuff. And um, every now and then when he was on some guest spots for other podcasts that we pop up on. But the one thing that always like stuck out to me was he's like, yeah, fuck it. You want to do this? Go do it. Like this kind of, why are you waiting on your dreams or or your goals? Like you want to do it, just go do it. And and who cares if it's shit? Because the first time you do it, at least you're making it happen. And, you know, the second time you do it, it won't be as bad. And and then all of a sudden, you know, you're doing the thing that you love or, or doing this thing that you never thought was possible. So that's the one thing that like anytime anyone says, you know, is Kevin Smith important to you? Or what do you think about Kevin Smith? That's, that's the one thing that always pops up into my mind. And, you know, I wanted to make a podcast for a good two or three years in a row. And my new year's resolution was this is the year I'm going to make a podcast. Fucking obviously didn't commit to it. Didn't do it next year. I'm going to make a podcast. Didn't do it. And then one year I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that as my New Year's resolution. And for some reason in the first week of January, I'm like, if it happens, it happens. I'll just like, fuck it. I'm buying the equipment. I did this. I brought that. And all of a sudden I've got a podcast running out of my house um, the first week into a year where I didn't even make it my resolution. And <clears throat> once again, a lot of that, I, I can't say that it's Kevin Smith, but it's, you know, that it's that attitude of just fucking do it. And um, yeah, one week in to that year, I was just like, fuck it, I'm doing it. And I did it. And that's the one thing I always take away from the kind of the message that he gives. So, Yeah. I feel like the the thing of Kevin Smith and the way I, I feel about him is that there's no, there's no fashion. I think he's Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he's a, a, a martyr or, or something yeah. like that. He's simply the person who a lot of us in a certain age group or uh, like into geek, nerdy stuff, whatever, like, Kevin Smith says a lot of stuff that we want to hear. He he's simply the person saying it, and he's sounding mm. confident. And because you respect him enough when he says certain things, you grab onto him. Especially if you're um, younger, uh, like eighteen, twenty, or whatever that sort of age. You, you got a dude saying just do your dream. It doesn't matter it, it, who that person is, as long as you respect them enough. I feel like you you kind of going to be like. Oh, that's nice to hear. I kind of like that. But yeah, so I, I used to listen to, I, I love all these films, obviously. And that was my introduction to Kevin Smith. But I remember when he announced he was like launching um, Smodcast Radio. Um, uh, did you stay up to like three in the morning when it went live too? I stayed up the first night it was yeah. ever going live. And I was laying on my bed with my laptop open, piece of shit laptop, and constantly refreshing, waiting for that thing to go yeah. live. And it was like a moment I kind of will not forget because it was, I, it was blowing my mind away that, you could do radio through the internet like that because I'd never actually considered that an option and whatever else. But yeah, I always remember that moment. And on and off throughout the years, I've always been on and off different Kevin Smith podcasts from the, like the lows I'm in now where much like Ryan's saying, I'm just too busy. Like I don't have the time to listen to as much podcasts as I would like to. And honestly, when I do most of the podcasts I do listen to these days, I choose to actually listen to um, friends stuff or like people in our own circles because I would actually just rather listen to and support other people's stuff than listen to, as you said, Kind of Funny or Kevin Smith stuff or whatever else. Like, you know, I just, that's the kind of way I, 
I view it. So it's like, I could not listen to fucking House Mario, Pop Culture, Stash Culture, whatever, and listen to Kevin Smith all the time. But that's just my choice. Um, but when I was at my high, I was listening to Smodcast, Hollywood Babylon, Smoothie Makers when he did that run, uh, Fat Man on Batman, of course, when that started up. Um, the interview one he did for a short period of time. There was even that fucking science one he did for a short period of time, whatever that was Edumacation called. was still yeah. brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Edumacation, which was like a couple of those. Like I was just, in, I would ingest fucking all of it. Um, and it is those key moments that stand out that kind of, I would definitely say if people like, if I get super famous tomorrow and someone's going to interview me, be like, who would you view as your inspirations in life? I would 100% put Kevin Smith as like a top of that because he was that person who, even to this day, even though if I still don't listen to him a lot, like that whole mantra of, I remember him answering like someone in the audience, the first time I ever heard him say like that whole just do it attitude. Like someone was asking like, how do I start a podcast? Like, how do I go about do it? Blah, 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 blah. And his answer was like, well, you've got a phone, like... Do you got friends? <laughs> you got a coffee table? Put the phone in the middle of the table. First record, just fucking do it. And it, and him just being like, it doesn't matter if no one listens to it. He's like, at worst, at worst, you and a bunch of friends have a great time, and you have something to listen to back fifty years from now and, and laugh about or something like that. You know, at, at worst, if no one listens to it, it's just memories. So, and I always kind of come back to that often because, as much as I want the Explosion Network to be successful because i would love to do this for my actual full-time job of course i'm not fucking why would i never say that that's not what i want yes 100 percent. and there are times i get a, serious and I, f- I feel like there are times i need to be serious and i need to be like i want to the explosion network to be successful and i have to put my serious face on and do whatever else then but then there are other times where i fall back onto remembering kevin smith saying these sorts of things and just being like i don't care who listens you know like we, we start up this podcast for this. I don't give a shit if anyone listens to this, honestly. I've, I've, had, a, I've had a great time doing this podcast and I couldn't give two shits if anyone lis- listens to it. If people listen to it and have fun, great. That's cool to me. But ultimately, I've had fun watching these movies and just talking about the movies on a weekly basis. And I think that's like one thing I've always garnered from Kevin Smith when it comes to podcasting is it's just like you, you can just do it and be like, if one person listens cool like there's one person that's 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 more than zero that's a success you know like you don't need a hundred i've always kind of garnered that from him and the, mm. the just the just do it attitude you know like people ask him like how should i start a movie these days he's like you got a fucking iphone 6 dude like that thing's a better camera than i had when i made clerks go we make got, your fucking movie like <laughs> look at steven soderbergh over here fucking filming things on fucking iphone 7 yeah exactly like his whole attitude would be like just fucking film it put it on youtube just do it like stop getting so focused on how do I make the movie? And people are asking these questions always been like, how do I make the movie and make be popular? But it's not like start at basis. Like how do you make it? Just film it. How do you do a podcast? Just fucking record it. Like stop worrying about things. Just have great times. He always talks about things being experiences, but I often think like the Kevin Smith that I kind of love and adore is not the Kevin Smith that was making these movies that we've been talking about, which I find interesting. Like the Kevin Smith that, we have now is a very like embraceful kind of happy dude who just wants positive stuff all the time. And I constantly see people online giving them shit for it. Like cause for whatever reason, all these comic book sites always write articles like Kevin Smith's thoughts on Spider-Man, Kevin Smith's thoughts on this. And people in the comments are like, I don't give two shits about his thoughts. Cause he's always super happy and he never like negative at it. Like never has a negative thought about any movies and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's kind of just the dude he is these days. And I kind of like it because he has such a, just do it attitude and you can see that for all the the non-viewers you universe movies obviously like he made fucking yoga hoses yoga hoses he makes fucking tasks he's just like i'm just doing shit that makes me happy you know but he's like reaching that fine line where he's, he's doing his job like he's making movies and of course he wants to make money on them you know of course he wants to make some level of money of them that would be nice but at the same time he's just been like ultimately the goal of these movies is to make me happy and that's what he does I don't think that's what his goal was with the viewers universe movies post clerks clerks was just, just I'll have a go. And that's amazing. And that's such like an example of his sort of go get him attitude post that it's like a period of Kevin Smith. Um, he's trying to make it like trying to be a proper director or something like that. So it's like um, the Kevin Smith I love and adore these days is like post 2005 Kevin Smith. I'd like to think, you know, it's post. Well, Cause if you go movies. back and watch the evening withs and you watch him now, uh, or any of his newer Q&As, his entire 
uh, stance, his body language is completely different. Yeah. And I think I think that's what you're, you're, you're spot yes. on. There was a transitional point at some at some moment in time where he became the hockey jersey, big smiley Kev, yes. and his whole outlook changed. Yeah, and I love it. I don't know why people hate on it. <laughs> I, I I agree. I think it's uh, perfect. As as funny as it is, like we were talking about last week, how in an evening with two, he does the whole like Lord of the Rings, like shitting on the Lord of the Rings speech thing, which they then put in Clerks too. He wouldn't do that these days. Well, maybe he would, but he'd be more jokingly about it. Yeah. I, I, I honestly feel like he, he's just kind of reached that stage where he'd rather just talk positively about things and put positive energy out there rather than spend a lot of time on negative stuff. Although I definitely feel like that persona, persona of like geek dude that was a thing. Like you had to kind of be curmudgeon It was always like, yeah. you know, comic book guy from fucking Simpsons and shit like that, you know? <laughs> um, but then the, the other thing that I always have, I think you were kind of talking about it before, Ryan, is like the other big quote thing that he's always said is the, you know, sur- surround yourself by uh, the yes men, not the no men, or the, the why, the, the why, and the why, why nots, yeah. not the whys and stuff like that. So, um, and that's often something that, you know, comes up in life, honestly, all, all, all the time, nearly, you know, like throughout the years, there's people and in my life, they've, they've come and gone. And I would say they're why not, they're, they're why people, you know, mm-hmm. and I always fall back to, onto him because I, I, I would rather have a small friendship group um, that supports me the, or, you know, creatively and in life and stuff rather than a big friendship group that has a bunch of people that are like, but why? Why would you do that? Like, why are we, Why did you try to do that? Like, even back when I was in, back in late high school, when I started making my YouTube videos and stuff, I had friends then at time where like, it was a waste of time. You know, that's silly. Why would you do that? Why YouTube, would you do that? This is never going to go anywhere. YouTube yeah. is nothing. Exactly. All that sort of stuff. So See, I, I was, like, to add to that, like I discovered, you know, my parents are that. My mom was the, why the fuck you do that? Why would you want to do that? Blah, blah, blah. Right? And then my dad has never been that why not person. He's the one that helped me line up all these things to to do what I wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, so it's very it's very jarring when you do kind of focus that within your, like, friends group and then yeah. also within your family. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like when my parents found out, <laughs> it's such a funny story which I'm talking about. When, when my parents found out I was making YouTube videos in when I was in grade seven, um, somewhere I was like 12 or whatever fuck it is. They, when they eventually found out, they hid the camera because it was my dad's camera that I was recording these videos on. They hid it behind locked door. Um, so I had to like save up my pocket money by not using it to buy food at school. So I was, I was my mum was giving me lunch money and I was not, I was not buying food with it. So I was starving myself at <laughs> school basically fuck. to save the money so I could buy a camera so I could continue making videos and stuff. But I don't like super hold it against my parents. I've brought it up several times on podcasts and stuff. It's not like I super hold it against them, but at the same time, I can't help but think that they, they didn't um, hone or help hone. Obviously, mm. something that I was getting into and was super interesting and stuff. It's hard because how are you supposed to know what how important YouTube is at that time or anything like that? Is what what were you doing to film? Like when were you filming? Uh, all all hours. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. after school, sometimes before school. Yeah. Sometimes I wouldn't come home until six o'clock because I'd go film shit at different places and whatever else. Yeah, but um, yeah, like I know in the same because I've had similar discussions with my mum as my, my mother as well. Because for her, her was she was pushing me to go to university and do that sort of stuff, and I did that. I got my five years of study, and then you know years later, now that I've done all this, she's like, no, no, this is what you're meant to do. Well, is that the because when I was getting, it's like, oh yeah, you go to university, study that, Dylan. You don't just run around trying to make short films by yourself on a camera and yeah. upload them to YouTube. You go to university to do that. You do well in school, you know. So I get it was just like a, it must be. It's an attitude of an era. Yeah, you know. I feel so. Yeah, like, you work within your means. You stay within your means, and you do this. Yeah, like I'd like to think that if I'm ever a father, I would be. I would like to think I would be more open to. And I don't mean like YouTube specifically, but it's like, oh, you're writing all the time, eh? Like creative yeah. endeavors. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel like just not because, the status quo. Yeah, exactly. Like whatever you're happy with, I, I'm gonna, I want to, I want to hone whatever it is into your life because you, you're Randall and clerks too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Mean, like one of my views in life is like, it's like super naive and silly every time but like i'm honestly a lot of times just like why can't people just do what they want to do because 
people always make this thing. They're like, well, if everyone could do it, everyone would be a super duper actor and make all the money. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't think actors should actually get paid as much as they do. So in like an ideal world, bring that down a little bit. And I'll just like an idea word where it's like so many people want to do things, but not everyone actually wants to be an actor. Some that's why going back to like last week of clerks too, where Randall's just like, I'm happy doing this. Like I, I I'm this is what makes me happy. I'm like, if that's what makes you happy, I'm happy for you. You know, if if working at fucking office works makes you happy, I'm happy for you. If if fucking directing movies makes you happy, I'm happy. If you want to draw pictures, I'm happy for you. That's what you want to do. And I always find it so hard, like getting into like retail jobs and stuff is like the the default or whatever you want to call it but it's like anything that's like a creative endeavor is like climbing fucking mount everest for some reason and i don't believe it actually should be like climbing mount Mm. everest i feel like it should be a lot easier i guess i I wish it was easier i know it's like a super naive like silly way to look at but no no like that's the exact same approach that i have in my workplace because we work within the within those services like we meet kids and young adults that have incredible creative talents, like people that can draw just outstanding stuff, as an example, right? But then if you ask them the question, like, what do you want to do for a job? They're like, oh, retail or hospitality. Hmm. Why? Like, well, why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, but why not? Like, why, 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 why not follow that? Like, that's... So part of my job is to put things in place to line them up to go do creative shit to see that it is obtainable. Like, I got this job by being creative. Like, fuck, you can do it. Yeah. Which is, I I, I feel like, um, like our parents' generation, I guess, just like they got it drilled into them. It's like, that's like the one percenters and everyone else should just accept. Like, don't even try. I feel I feel like it was such an attitude of don't even try. You know, risk you, get a, you get a job, you have your two, your two point five kids in your station yes. wagon, you pick a fence and all that sort of crap, and yeah, like if you if you was gonna make it as something other than general thing that everyone else is, you would magically make it when you was like sixteen years old. You'd be a prodigy. Like, don't even bother if if, if you're eighteen and you ain't got that shit worked out. Yeah, have your two kids, buy a house, and sell down. Yeah, that's it. That's your life. Yeah, work <laughs> at the same place the next thirty years. Yeah, even if it but sucks. That, yeah. But that's why, like, having that sort of mentality, like, around family members, be that my parents or my grandparents or whoever, bring it back to Kevin Smith. I was like, that's why it's always good to have, like, Kevin Smith, someone in your life, well, not directly in your life, but someone who will say things like, you know, follow your dreams, do your things. Because I guess for a lot of people, they don't have that. That's why I think, I, I do believe that's why Kevin Smith is so gravitated towards by a lot of people, is because a lot of these people don't have anyone in their life who is willing to say, try go for it, follow your dreams, have a go, just fucking do it. You know, a lot of these, a lot of people don't have anyone in their life they'll say any of that. So Kevin Smith is literally that person to them. And that's why that's why I think Kevin Smith is so beloved. I don't actually think it's because of his movies as much as that may be hard for, <laughs> you know, like Ke- Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith's early move, movie career, sure. Kevin Smith is known today because of the person he is and not his movies is what yeah, I he's think. He's known for being Kevin mm. Smith now, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's not the shit on his movies because I'm saying I, I really love a lot of these movies. I said Mole Rats is in like my top 10 movies of all time. For sure. Kevin Smith, his movie career is completely separate to these days. It's like a completely separate entity. He to transcends them. Yes. It absolutely transcends them. And he's one of very few filmmakers who actually do transcend their their their, their filmography, I think. Yeah. Um, any wrapping up thoughts before we end this episode then, I guess? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I bared my soul pretty much enough. I, I think. Yeah, good job. <laughs> good. Uh, so that is it for this week's episode, and it'll be it for Radio Movies until we uh, get our hands on Jalen Silent Bob reboot, of course. Uh, how long will that be is TBD. Um, stay tuned to all the Twitter accounts I'm about to throw out, though, to know when that's going to show up or you know just keep the podcast subscribed and when the episode shows up it'll just download like that's well, there the- are a bunch of other movies that he's made that we may do a season two at some point yeah i mean if like demands you know, there you know if that's that's if that's a thing that people want or you know we'll just do it because we want it <laughs> well, yeah because <laughs> yeah, as, as i said give me an excuse to talk about zach and mary like all day and red so, state, oh, red state. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I could talk about Red State. Uh, yeah, well, 
we won't we won't say when that's coming. No, we, we put the you, you put the vibes out into the ether and you see yeah. what happens, and then M- much like we don't know when Jane Silent Bob reboot's coming, you don't know when those those episodes <laughs> are coming. <laughs> but it's sometime in the future. <laughs> uh, you can find Buddy Watson over at dashgamer.com on the Dash Culture Podcast every fortnight talking pop culture, movies, and gaming. Be sure to follow him on Twitter at BuddyWatson12. You can find Ryan Betson over at youtube.com slash the pop culture is talking all things PlayStation on four to players and wrestling on the young and the wrestlers. Follow him on Twitter at HaggardMC. And you can find myself right here on ExplosionNetwork.com on one of our movies, games, or TV podcasts like Arcade okay, Couch or What Do You Want to Watch? And you can follow me on Twitter at Vivaldil, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. Please be sure to review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or whatever you're listening to. And for the last and final time, please tweet at Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes and tell them we need to get our hands on Jay on Silent Bob Reboot. Thank you. We will see you, well, whenever, sometime in the future. Snoochy Boochies. Thank you very much. The Jedi mind trick. Holy shit, motherfucking Yoda and shit. It was between it was between that and danger, danger. My name is Anakin. My shitty acting is ruining saga. <laughs> <laughs> but we go at it. I think you went with that.